and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Until 1917, the U.S. Navy relied on traditional logistics facilities to refuel their warships. However, these methods offered less flexibility and a limited deployment period. In 1899, the Navy began experiments for underway replenishment, an innovative refueling method that enables replenishment of ships while underway. The declaration of World War I marked a turning point. Back then, the Navy decided to conduct its first underway replenishment to 35 destroyers to extend their operational range and stay deployed for prolonged periods. While this technique is practical, it is not without challenges. During connected replenishment, both the supply vessel and the recipient should maintain a synchronized and steady course and speed. A demanding task, especially when the weather is not favorable. Storms impact the hydrodynamics of the vessel, resulting in increased pitching rolling and heaving motions, making maneuvering difficult for the helmsman. Yet, they are experienced in conducting underway replenishment in Sea State 4 and even Sea State 5 if necessary. During this sensitive operation, teamwork is the key. Each team, from deckhands to navigation officers, plays a crucial role in ensuring a safe and efficient replenishment operation. Sailors assigned to the aircraft carrier coordinate with the oiler vessel through sight, phone lines, and radio to maintain an approximate 180 to 200 foot separation. A shot line is then fired from the supplier to enable the passing of transfer lines and fuel hoses while maintaining tension on the wires. Next, the team connects the fuel hoses to start the pumping, all while the vessel navigates the high seas. Members on the bridge must keep a close eye on the vessel's course to assist with steering the ships. A slight deviation on either side could result in a collision of ships or the parting of hoses, causing massive marine pollution. In fact, statistics indicate that at a speed of 12 knots, a one degree variation in heading will produce a lateral speed of around 20 feet per minute. The mission becomes even more challenging when replenishment is done for two receivers simultaneously. Nevertheless, 
U.S. sailors are well-versed in preventing these risks from becoming a reality. Unrep is a technique of choice. The U.S. Navy employs this method to supply fuel to all categories of ships, including auxiliary ones known as USNS. Unlike commissioned naval vessels, USNS ships are typically civilian manned and crewed by civil service mariners. Nevertheless, a few military personnel might be on board to support specific missions, communications, and protection. While there is a targeting risk, USNS, though not a combatant, features some armament mainly designed for self-protection. USNS are designated for various logistical, support, and auxiliary roles, such as transporting dry cargo, ammunition, fuel, and other supplies. In fact, replenishment oilers are one type of the U.S. naval ship. Ensuring these vessels remain well supplied with fuel becomes paramount, as their ability to support various naval operations hinges on this essential resource. After all, in the middle of the sea, we do not need only firing capabilities. We might need cargo or even a hospital. Speaking of hospitals, the USNS Mercy and USNS Comfort are perfect examples of mobile medical facilities. Hospital ships like Mercy and Comfort provide crucial medical assistance in times of crises and emergencies. Underway replenishment for these floating hospitals is the same as for armed ships. The two vessels first match their speed and course. Once in a parallel position, crews pass communication and distance lines, along with the tension span wire. Fuel is then transferred through hoses, while other cargo like medicines, swings down from the rigging transfer line. Replenishment at sea enables hospital ships to stay on station for extended periods, respond rapidly to emerging situations, and execute sustained missions without interruption. Vertical replenishment, or vert rep, is another type of underway replenishment. This method consists of delivering cargo to vessels by helicopter. Since the carrying capacity of helicopters is limited, 
vertical replenishment is used as a supplement alongside connected replenishment. Yet, it is the preferred technique for handling the transfer of ammunition. For instance, to supply the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Carl Vinson, the crew conducted simultaneous replenishments. The weapons loads were carefully supplied by helicopter, while dry cargoes were transferred through the Clark-class dry cargo ship, USNS Washington Chambers. During vert rep operations, crews skillfully lower cargo on slings, navigating the challenges of wind and sea to deliver supplies to the waiting decks below. Typically, the normal load comprises two to four pallets with a total weight limit of 4,000 pounds. Unlike food and dry cargo, handling munitions requires utmost attention. The crewmen must adhere to multiple safety procedures and synchronize the hovering chopper with the ship's movement to prevent shocks. As the helicopter hovers above the ship, a crewman takes position around the cargo hook to observe the loads as they are lowered. Next, the crew transfers the cargo from the deck to inside the vessel with forklifts. Vertical replenishment, vert rep, is essential to sustaining the operational readiness of nuclear submarines. Unlike aircraft carriers, Submarines have a rounded, small deck, making the transfer a bit more difficult. In fact, fuel is not needed for nuclear-powered submarines. They have enough endurance to run 20 years without needing to refuel, but resupplying them with food, spare parts, medical supplies, and other essential goods is crucial to remain deployed. In optimal conditions, U.S. submarines can carry food sufficient for up to 90 days. Still, after that, these waterborne boomers need to be supplied at sea to extend their range and mission capability. Among various airborne platforms, the U.S. Air Force's C-17 stands as a good option for heavy cargo. The C-17 Globemaster III airdrops payload to USS Henry M. Jackson. The Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine was underway in the vicinity of the Hawaiian Islands.
This dynamic capability allows for seamless resupply operations, enabling aircraft carriers, submarines, and other ships within the strike groups to receive essential provisions without needing port visits. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.